With the economy as lousy as it is, or maybe you've been out of work, maybe your savings have really taken a big hit, do you ever find yourself awake at night worrying about everything? Do you sometimes just find yourself staring off in space, wondering what in the world is going to happen? Well, hey, you want to stay tuned for Bible study number 154, our top priority. Hey, everyone, this is Pastor Mark Pierce with uh, Church Requel. I am uh, sitting here on this uh, Wednesday morning, August the 26th, on my uh, patio. Uh, This is actually where I love to uh, do some work in the summertime. It's just nice to be outside on a beautiful day like today. Um, I'm coming back to you again with another Bible study, and I know that we have uh, taken a couple of months off, and I can't promise that I wouldn't ever take another month or two off. But to be honest with you, I just cannot escape the conviction that this is something that I should be doing. And and maybe it's just uh, me. Maybe I just really need the discipline of doing this for myself. But I really believe that uh, God is asking me to be diligent in working through on a verse-by-verse basis. That there might be people uh, on the internet who watch this and certainly are a small little growing church. Uh, That there might be people who come along who could benefit from uh, watching a verse-by-verse Bible study. So I'm going to come back to it, and uh, whoever can benefit from it, well, you know, I'll leave that uh, up to God and to his uh, power uh, to uh, make this worthwhile. We uh, stopped off at Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 30 uh, a couple of months ago, so we're just going to pick right up there, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, and I'll be reading through uh, verse 33 here this morning. Matthew chapter 6, verse 30, uh, 31, excuse me. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now, one of the things that we always learn whenever we're doing a Bible study is that whenever I see the word therefore, I I ask the question, what's the therefore, therefore? Anxiousness is what Jesus is talking about here. And certainly in the context of all of what we've seen happen in chapter 6, the action of doing the things that Jesus has been talking about can really help us deal with this topic of anxiousness. I think that uh, Jesus has been looking at this the whole time. Remember, this is one sermon that Jesus is giving. And in the context of that, we can see at the beginning of chapter 6, Jesus is talking about giving to the needy. You know, when you're giving to someone who's more needy than you, all of a sudden the needs that you think are so paramount tend to disappear and your focus is on other people instead of yourself. Jesus talks about praying and uh, we see uh, a great, uh, what we now know as the Lord's Prayer where Jesus uh, tells us how we go to God and how we ask for things. Uh, Paul echoes this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, where he says, Hey, don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, you know, go to God in prayer. And then Jesus uh, talks to us about fasting, that if we are willing to give up a meal or two and let our hunger for food drive us as a reminder, as a hunger towards God, that our priority maybe will be a little bit more right than what it otherwise would be. And then he talks about having treasures in heaven, that we have a a different kind of focus of what treasures are and not just the treasures that we have here on earth. So all of this has been leading up to what Jesus, I think, is saying now when he says, don't be anxious about what we eat or what we drink or, or what we wear. In fact, he goes on to say, for the Gentiles seek after all these things. Right? So whenever we see the word Gentiles, what really that means is anyone who is not Jewish. And so Jesus is talking mostly to those people who are Jewish or who are significantly influenced by the Jewish faith. And he said, hey, you know, those who are not within the Jewish culture, those who don't know what you know, that's what they worry about. So why in the world would you be worried about all things? See, this is a a different philosophy 
that Jesus is talking about here. A philosophy not like the Gentiles where we are seeking after food and drink and clothing, but rather this is a, a philosophy where our focus is different. Now, let's be very, very clear here. <laughs> uh, I don't think Jesus is saying, hey, you know, you as Jewish people don't ever worry about these things, right? Because actually all these things that we're talking about here as uh, things to worry about are human worries, humanity encompassing both Jews and non-Jews. Jesus is saying there's something different about you and your Jewishness, and I think we could also say now this would be true about our Christianity. There's something about your faith that makes the philosophy that you follow a little bit different, and that is that you have a heavenly Father. You have a heavenly father philosophy, not just a, a God who sits in heaven, who, who spun everything together and got it all started and then kind of steps away and says, well, whatever will be, will be. No, you have a heavenly father, an Abba, daddy, someone who cares for you so much, who is interested in your needs and who loves you with a, a great love. A heavenly father, he says, who knows that you need them all. Now, you combine together this concept of an all-powerful God together with a concept of a God who knows our needs, and you end up, if you really believe both of those, you end up with a belief and a comfort that our needs are going to be met. After all, our greatest need really is God and his kingdom. <laughs> but you know what? We're often distracted away from God and we're distracted away from the eternal things that God provides by ourselves and our needs and the temporal or time-focused things that are going on around us. So our top priority, what should that be? <laughs> what should we uh, do about it? Well, our top priority should be seeking out God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Now, what does God's kingdom mean? Well, you know, whenever I think about God's kingdom, I think about God's will, and I think of God's will being done. After all, in God's kingdom, God is king, and what God wants is what gets done. And in fact, we as Christ followers are allowing God to so work in our life that God's kingdom is invading earth. And so where we go, we bring Christ with us, we bring Christ's spirit with us, and we bring a submission of ourselves to God. Not only God's kingdom, but notice it says here also to God's righteousness. Now, what does that mean? It means that we not only want to do the right things, <laughs> but we want to do things in the right way. It's not just the end result that matters, but it's getting there in the right way, at the right time, with God's integrity, with God's character in mind. Now, here's the challenging question for us today. What am I more concerned about? Am I more concerned about my needs being met? the food, clothing, shelter, that type of thing? Or am I more concerned with God's kingdom and God's righteousness? Where am I spending my time? Where am I spending my resources? Where is my focus? And where is my attention? You know, Jesus leaves us here with a great promise. He tells us that if, if I do these things, if I focus on God's kingdom and on God's righteousness, then what? All these things will be added to you. In other words, if I seek his kingdom and his righteousness, God will take care of me. At least that's what Jesus promises here. And ultimately it comes down to, am I going to believe what Jesus says or not? God has always been taking care of me. Even when it looked like before, maybe it was me taking care of me. It was my abilities taking care of my needs. I'll come to see that really it's been what God has given me in terms of my abilities, even the air that I breathe, let alone the job that I have, that God has been behind everything I do. And I'll come to realize that because I make God my first priority. Have a great day today.